This is a letter to attorney at law, Mrs. May Macaulay, written by a reader of the Jamaica Observer newspaper. Before I read it, I'm going to read information about Mrs. Macaulay and the headline and the, the disclaimer. Margaret May Macaulay is an attorney at law, Supreme Court mediator, notary public, and women and children's rights advocate. Send questions by email to allwoman at jamaicaobserver.com and you have the address there. The content of this article are for information purposes only and must not be relied upon as an alternative to legal advice from your own attorney. Now, let's look at the case. The question. Dear Mrs. Macaulay, I recently dated a man and over the course of knowing him we spoke about sexually transmitted disease STDs testing. He told me that he tested and all was well. I begged him to use a condom and he would not comply. Months later I got tested and learned I had contracted the herpes virus, chlamydia and three other low grade infections. That's a total of five infections. I told him. He responded and with silence and even sent me video recordings of how I could treat the virus. He does not deny or even try to blame me. The overall testing and medication cost me roughly $50,000 and I will have to repeat in three months. In addition, the emotional stress is almost unbearable. The questions are, so here are the questions the reader is asking the lawyer. Can I sue him for infecting me? Can I sue for emotional distress? Can I sue for medical expense past and present? Thank you for your response. All right, let us see what the lawyer has to say. I am deeply concerned that you have found yourself infected, especially after you had spoken with your ex-boyfriend about testing. Clearly he misled you and, in addition, refused to use condoms even though you begged him to do so. I must deal frankly with his assurance to you that he had been tested, which led you to believe that he was healthy. But did you know that he had been tested? Did you know? Or you could, did you just take his word for it? The fact that you beg him to use condoms says to me that you did not know whether to fully accept what he told you and that you felt that you did not have the power to demand condom use. When he refused, instead of telling no, him no, you chose to stay and be intimate with him. Hmm. So you see, she put her life and health at risk. All right? But anyway, we continue. There are no clear statutory laws in Jamaica about having sexual intercourse, knowing you are infected with sexually transmitted diseases and intentionally or recklessly infecting your partner except for section 5 subsection 3e of the sexual offenses act of 2009 section 5 of the act deals with the commission of the offense of rape by a husband against his wife if he had sexual intercourse in certain listed categories and that he knows he is suffering from a sexually transmitted infection. Section 5, subsection 3e. The penalty upon a conviction is life imprisonment or not less than 15 years. So that seems to be a forceful sexual act against her will knowing that he is infected and infecting her. Right. The offenses of rape 
in the above act and causing actual or grievous bodily harm in the offenses against the person act 1864 Wow, long time ago could support such charges if the director of public prosecution so decides because your boyfriend lied to you and deceived you and it cannot be said that you consented to have sexual intercourse with him consent is only effective if you know all the relevant facts each time you agree to participate I wonder what all those relevant facts are all right. you clearly did not because of your boyfriend's deception and you suffered harm to your body and health as a consequence as you have seen I have referred to your circumstances under criminal law and such proceedings I must admit that I am not aware of any civil claim for damages for recklessly or intentionally infecting someone with STDs but since there is law which makes it rape albeit between husband and wife in circumstances of broken marriages and in those of the offenses against the person act of offenses causing actual or grievous harm a civil claim could be filed for damages even as a test case from which a precedent could be the result on which other cases can be pursued in the future so that would mean that there was no such case before and if she files such a civil suit the outcome of that suit could be used by other judges in the future to make a decision All right. now we continue but you would have to find a lawyer who would be prepared to forge a new path legally all I can say to you now is that there are no clear precedent that if you sue, you would succeed. But it is possible, especially by way of a test case, which is probably or pro properly researched and argued. Hmm. Maybe someone who is violated in this way and listening to this could possibly find a lawyer and pursue such a case if this reader doesn't well whether she does or not it would be interesting to see the outcome but anyway continue reading on your question of emotional distress or mental distress agony or suffering this would have to be proved by acceptable evidence and medical expert evidence it is not like proving your expenses of fifty thousand dollars wherein you can produce your receipt what i'm saying is that you just just looking at your situation on the face of it one would as the law stands today say that you have no chance of success but find a good lawyer who is not afraid of innovating cases of action that would not shy away from doing an innovative case or a case with innovative claim then you would be more fully advised about the chances or not of success which you may have I am sorry that I cannot say otherwise because I firmly believe that in a case such as yours you ought to be able to file and pursue your claim in the Supreme Court for damages as to what your boyfriend did and um, was the pick, the, the despicable in every sense. What your boyfriend did was despicable in every sense. So I do not, I do wish you the very best and our success. Please find a good lawyer 
and discuss the matter, the entire matter with them, so that they can be properly advised whether you have causes of action and your chances of success or failure. You need to you need as close to certainty as you can get so that you do not send good money after bad and suffer more losses. All the best. Alright. Now I'm saying in this about this case now. I'm sure that if a man and a woman engage in sexual intercourse, the woman told the man that she was clean. It was unprotected and, she, and he became infected. He could also pursue the case. However, due to the biases and double standards of society, maybe a woman pursuing such a case against a man is more likely to succeed. Right? So, it would be interesting if this woman pursued this case or other such victims pursue this case. But, my personal advice is do not have protected, unprotected intercourse with anybody. Unless you've known them for a long time and you go to the doctor together and look at each other's documents that the doctor signed. Sit down and speak with the doctor. That is my advice.